Ooh, damn. <laughs> In nine years of making these videos, he still hasn't figured out how to make a mimosa. What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today, we're gonna watch some more Tipsy Bartender. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's go check this out. Bang! Bloop. Now you come with your little strawberries. We use an effing. Whatever, vodka is vodka. No, vodka is not vodka. If you ever blind tasted vodka, which I have, you can tell that there is a difference between different brands, all right? A champagne. He really used a knife to open the foil. There's tabs on it. You, you don't need any tools to open sparkling wine, okay? Woo! Based on a loud pop, I wouldn't be surprised that those sparkling wines are room temperature. They don't even have a frost around them. <gasps> Ooh, damn. <laughs> <gasps> what? Why did he do that? Are you kidding me? Even kids know to not shake things that are carbonated. And he just shook this. Look what he just. He just made a mess. Why did he do that? Little kids know this. We used to play pranks on each other just by shaking each other's cans of soda pop when our friends were looking. In nine years of making these videos, he still hasn't figured out how to make a mimosa. And your friggin' sugar rim's gone. Look at that, there's nothing left. Now you're coming with your juice, okay? Oh, by the way, this is pink lemonade. <laughs> I guess he must be watching some of my videos. He now knows to put the juice after the sparkling wine. But then he messes it up because he shakes the bottle. That's not that complicated. You pour the sparkling wine and then you pour the juice. That's it. There's no shaking. There's no whatever this was. That's all it is. All right. You've been doing this for nine years and you still haven't figured it out. I gonna re-rim this glass, okay? <laughs> Oh boy, I had to get my rim right, okay? There's so many extra steps here. Why do you need to add all these extra steps? It's a freaking mimosa! How hard is it to make a mimosa? Like, why are you overcomplicating this? Yeah. Now you're pouring it back and forth. That means it's, it's already room temperature. It was already gonna be flat. And now you're pouring it out and then pouring it back in. That's gonna get rid of even more carbonation and it's gonna get more and more flat. And there you have it, the giant pink lemonade mimosa, guys. You saw what went into this. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of nonsense. This trick took way longer than it should. Like, why did you have to put all these extra steps? Mimosas, it's it just the spot in the wine and then the juice, all right? You don't need to shake it, make a mess, wipe down the mess, pour everything out after you do this. You add the sugar rim and then you pour it back in. This is way too many steps for such a simple drink. This is not that complicated. These are just, it's just a mimosa. You don't need any bartending knowledge to know how to make a mimosa, right? It should be really that simple. There's none of, this is way too many extra steps to make this. Okay, vodka time. Next up, we come in behind that with some cranberry. Now we come behind that with our champagne. We're using the goods. Again, you don't need a knife to open the foil. There's a tab specifically for you to just grab it and tear off the foil. <laughs> Once again, room temperature sparkling wine should not pop that loud. <laughs> Watch your neighbors call the police. Oh my god. Watch your neighbors call the police. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. He's already made a mess before he even started the mimosa. How come it's so hard for him to make a mimosa? This is why you gotta chill the bottles because now you lost all the carbonation already. And you've made a mess. You know, I always wanted to drive a champagne, right? Oh, okay, okay. Does he not learn from his mistakes? Why is he doing it this way? Don't shake carbonated beverages, okay? This comes as little children know this. It don't work so well with the champagne. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this guy doesn't learn from his own mistakes. He just did this, and now he's doing it again. Are you serious? Okay, guys, so now we got craisins, which is dried cranberries, okay? Okay, now this is the moment of truth. Look how flat that is. 
is because he shook the Camille's room temperature to begin with, and then he also shook the bottle, so the carbonation got lost even further. This one is for you, because it's a margarita sangria. We start off with some lime slices. You drop in a couple orange slices, okay? Then you come behind with a little bit of lemon, okay? Why? Because lemon is citrus too, okay? You lemons do not go into a margarita. You'll be lucky to find lemons in Mexico. Coming over the top of that homeboy with some tequila. One, two, three. Now you can hit it with some triple set. He's only putting three quarters of an ounce of tequila in that giant pitcher. Like, okay. Agave nectar. Now we coming behind that with a Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> Tipsy tornado time. There you see it. There you see it. <laughs> Tipsy tornado. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. We're going to the top. Oh Lord. Don't tell me. He's not going to put ice. Oh my God. He's making another iceless room temperature sangria. Now a little bit of pineapple juice, okay? Cause some of you might want a little mix in there. Ready now? Come in with a little spoon. What was the point of the pineapple juice? Drop that into it. Now you come over the top, okay? And there you have it, homeboy. The margarita sangria de <laughs> It's not a margarita. You don't have lime juice in it. And on top of that, this is gonna be room temperature cause there's no ice. Lime wheels is just a garnish. You just put tequila, just a splash, agave, and triple sec. So you have two types of sweeteners, but you don't have any citrus juice to counter that. This thing is gonna be so sweet, and it's gonna be warm. Got our sour worms here. Ugh. Oh my god! How can you just make a drink without making a mess? No, we do not know. We soak them in booze. He let them suck up a little bit of vodka. So we can just take one or two of these. That's not gonna do anything. That's not a lot of vodka is gonna go in. So let me come up with some soda. <sighs> Guys. Don't tell me he's gonna freeze a carbonated beverage. You cannot freeze carbonation. It'll come out. And sometimes it could even like create a mess because it expands. Once again, you cannot freeze carbonated beverages. If you don't believe me, try to freeze a can of soda and see what happens. You can't come over with a little splash in each one, right? But I mean, you, you won't go light. Why? You already put vodka in the, or you're supposed to have vodka in the gummy worms. What is that gonna do? All right, all right, all right. Let's see what's up. Oh, snap. <laughs> How are you gonna eat that? You have parts of it that's ice that was melt. What if you're just a little bit away and there's like a little gummy worm sticking out? It's a completely different phase in nature. Got my giant wine glass. Watch this homeboy, so I'm grabbing some blueberries. I'm glad he's using a cutting board this time, but they're all over the counter. Why isn't he putting those blueberries into a bowl like a sensible person would? We slipped these in. When I was a little boy, our strawberries used to look way healthier than this, okay? They had seeds and stuff, they're seedless. We seedless strawberries or something. Did he just say that? You can clearly see the seeds. All of them have seeds. Does he not know the anatomy of the strawberries? The seeds are on the outside. Now freeze the time. All right, there we go. Why do these have shaker tins that are frozen? I've seen mixing glasses that are frozen. Shaker tins are metal. They change temperature just like that. But you don't need to pre-freeze your shakers. So in certain competitions, you can actually pre-chill them on the spot with just um, just ice and maybe a little bit of water. And you can pre-chill the shakers and then throw away the ice. But you don't need to put them in the freezer because metal is a very good conductor. Let's go pretty first. These are prettier. Of course, he's the tipsy bartender, so of course he's gonna make a mess. Vodka. Vodka homeboy. How's that? Damn, that heavy. She heavy. If you're gonna put that much vodka, why do you have a pour spout in there? Pour spouts, you don't pour more than two ounces per drink. It would have been way faster just to take the pour spout out and just pour it into a measuring cup or directly into that wine glass. Oh, sorry, sorry. I forgot people have stuff to live for. Excuse me, okay? Sometimes if you... I've never, why did he, he open that with the worm? He doesn't have a proper blade that's on the wine key. And the foil is still there. He didn't even get rid of the foil. So now you risk having bits of foil that goes into the drink. Now we need a little mixer for that. Yeah, this is the spritz part. 
Are you kidding me? Club soda, you have to pre-chill it. You just lost all the carbonation because you left it in room temperature. You see all the bubbles that just left? This thing is gonna be flat. I don't need much spritz, okay? It's... Oh! <laughs> he did the same thing he did on that mimosa! Does he not learn from his mistakes? Why did he do that? You cannot shake carbonated beverages, okay? You should have learned this as a little kid. How come he doesn't know this? Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.